this video, you will learn how to use Google Meet like a pro. This is the second of two consecutive videos, and stay to the end of the video to see a bonus feature. To find out how to start a meeting, how to add and remove people, and to get an overview of all the meeting controls, check out the first video I'm linking right now. Record a meeting. You can record a meeting if you're the organizer of the meeting or if you're from the same organization as the organizer. And you do so by clicking on record meeting and then on start recording. And then here, make sure that everyone is ready. So this is very important. Don't just start recording, recording a meeting, but instead ask people for their consent and then click on start. And you'll hear a noise once it has gone and also hear the visual hint that the recording has started. And once you're done, you simply click on stop recording. Now, what is recorded? Well, whatever is or any active speaker and whatever is presented from a tab window and so on. And where does the recording land? Well, if you're the organizer, check your mailbox because here you'll find the recording of the video or of the call and it is always saved to Google Drive. Let's head over to Google Drive and you'll see that there's one specific folder for that, meet recordings in case there's no, no such um, folder because you've never recorded anything, then Google will create such a folder for you and we'll put any recordings in here. And here we see that this recording has been shared. That's nothing I've done. Why is that the case? Well, that is because it's a recording of a video or of a meeting where multiple people were invited. So two things happened. A link to that recording was added to the calendar invitation. This happened automatically. This wasn't done by me. And the second thing is that that recording was shared with the participants of that meeting. In this case, it should be Adam. Yes, it is Adam because he was a participant of that meeting. So that's an easy way how anyone who was invited to the meeting can access that recording, even though it is safe to your my drive. Present during meeting. There are three ways that you can present during a meeting. Let's start with a tab and here we see best for audio and animation. So we can choose any tab we have open here like this one and then share a screen. Now this is the only way that you can share your screen and audio. So if you're showing a video, then it has to be sharing a tab. I'm gonna click on stop sharing. By the way, let's say you're in a Google Meet call and in another tab, you are having this, the slide presentation you wanna present. You could also click here on this button and then present tab to meeting. Just choose that tab, click on share. And like so, this is probably a very easy setup to be sharing your tab while you're in a Google Meet call. So you could do this directly from the document where you want to be presenting. And sometime in the future, um, Google has said that you should see the tiles of the meeting participants in that tab that you're presenting. That's currently not the case. So if you wanna see the participants, you have to head back over to the tab with the participants here. Let's choose a window this time. So here we can choose um, and say, um, I don't know, uh, this window and what's gonna give me the option, and this is something I use a lot when I'm you know, giving training sessions, whatever I want to show will be showed. So if I click on this tab or this tab, it doesn't matter because I'm sharing my entire window. As a matter of fact, you see it back here. Let me just, I could also click on stop presenting here, but what I actually have to do is say ignore like so. Now this is gonna be an infinite loop obviously because um, I'm sharing that, ex um, ex that window where the Google Meet call is in. So uh, that is not a good option, sharing that window show or showing that tab that you're currently presenting, but you get the point that I can show my entire window so I could have multiple tabs open and jump between these um, different tabs and the participants would always see what I'm sharing. So let me head over and stop sharing like so. And the last option would be your entire screen. Now in my case, I have two screens hooked up. This is the one I'm currently working on. So I could click on that and then they would see everything that is on my screen. 
What happens if you start presenting while someone else is already presenting? Now, in this case, we see Adam is presenting here. Um, if I go ahead and say, hey, I want to present the tab. I don't know. Let's say the calendar. I could say share now. And let's say the calendar share. So currently Jane is presenting her tab, the calendar here. I can verify this by clicking on here and Adam's presentation is still here, but it's not in the spotlight. So his is kind of like paused and my presentation has taken over. Whiteboard. Let's add a whiteboard, AKA a Jamboard to our call so that we can start collaborating on it. And we have two options. Either we start a new whiteboard or we choose from drive. So let's start a new whiteboard. It's creating the jam and it's saving it to um, my drive of the account we're joining from. And it's saying that Adam will be able to edit the document. Adam is currently not in the call yet, but he's scheduled to be in the call, meaning that he's in the calendar invite of this Google Meet call. And so automatically I can give him access, editing access. I can say yes, send. And now here you go. A new window opens up with our Jamboard. It has the ID, so to speak, of our call and there you go. It's added to our Jamboard. And if we have a look at our chat um, simultaneously as or right after it was created, a link to the document was created. So if I click on it, there you go. This is our document now in this browser window. So that means that the link is pasted in the chat so that anyone in the call can easily access that Jamboard. Now you have to be aware of that. Adam, even though he has access to the document, he does not see this chat. Why? Remember from the first video, he's going to join after this has been posted or this chat has been sent and that's why he will not see that. So I might have to repost that again. Now let's try out the second option, choose from drive. Now we're going to choose, let's say the Eisenhower matrix, click on it, open jam. Again, a new window opens up with this jam. And if we head back into our chat, we see also this has been um, pasted here or shared as a chat so that people can easily click on it and access that jam. Breakout rooms. Breakout rooms can be created in advance for scheduled calls. If you're interested in finding out how to do so, then leave me a comment below. In our case, we want to create a breakout room ad hoc during a call and we click on breakout rooms to do so and we set up breakout rooms. Now, the minimum rooms that we can create are two, the maximum are a hundred. I can set a timer on a room if I wanted to, uh, I'll do so afterwards. Uh, I could shuffle the people so I could just randomly have them be um, put into these rooms. In this case, Adam is just in one room. Oh, by the way, I can rename this. Uh, I could call this uh, room one if I wanted to. Um, and I could drag the participants into a specific room if I wanted to. Now, if I click on timer again, I could set the end of the breakout room. Uh, let's put it to one minute like so. Okay. And now open rooms. Now what happens for the participants? Um, so I'm dragging in um, Adam's view and he's been invited to the room. So only once he clicks on join, will he actually join that specific room? Now what's interesting here is that uh, chat from breakout. There you go. This is only visible to the people in that specific breakout room. So if I go back into Jane, she's still in the main room. She does not see that. Now we set the timer to one minute, which means that this breakout room will be ended after one minute. And we're currently seeing again, Adam's view, the green view here, and he could ask for help. So have Jane come into the room if he wanted to, or return to the main call. Uh, let's ask for help uh, since we still have some time. So ask for help here. We see someone or actually Adam in room one ask for help. So I could have clicked on that link and jumped into the breakout room. Now the breakout room, the time is up. 
let's see what happened for Adam. So he's still kind of like in this room or not, let's say he's in limbo, but he's not quite in the main room yet. Because what he has to do is say, return to main call, and then he'll enter the main call again. So you see, even though you create these breakout rooms and you can say, I want these participants in that room and that one in that room, you can't just simply move the people. You can't kind of like throw them out of the main room and into that meeting uh, or that breakout room or get them back. So it's still the people, the, the participants themselves who have to enter that room and who have to exit it again. Polls in Q&A. Let's see how we can create a poll by clicking on activities and then on polls. By the way, you'll only be able to do this if you're a moderator or a host or a co-host. Let's ask a question. I have something copied. There you go. And here we say yes and no. And uh, I can save this. And once I'm ready to launch it, I simply click here on launch. And now let's see Adam's view. So what he sees down here is, hey, a poll launch. So uh, he can click here on polls and now he can vote. Now what I like doing, this is just a bonus tip. I always like giving um, the participants the option of seeing the results. So you have to flick this switch here and let's get back to Adam's account back here. There you go. So he can say yes vote and then he sees how many people have voted. There you go. It has been updated to one person. Now, something else we're going to do is uh, give our participants, where is it here, the option to uh, ask questions. So this is a participant, in this case, Adam asking a question. What is Google? Oh my goodness, Google Meet like so. And he can simply click on post. And how do you as a moderator see this? Let's have a look. Um, so if you click on activities, or in this case, if we go back, let's just click on activities to simulate that uh, a new question came in. You see here, you could also not allow questions to be asked, but in this case, it's on. So here we see Adam's question. Um, other people could upvote this if they wanted to. And um, I could sort by oldest first, newest first, or most popular. That's where the voting for comes in handy. And I could show currently all questions, but I could also say maybe only answered or hidden or whatever. Um, so if I answer this question, I could say this has been answered. And there you go. Um, that is how you can use the Q&A feature. Host management. Host management is available to all of the Google Workspace editions, but depending on the edition you have, you will have host management enabled as default or maybe not. How do you make it work or what do you make of it? Click on the host management over here and here it appears. I can turn it on or off. So here's where I could define if people can share their screen or send out chat messages or if I want to disable that. Quick access is quite interesting because it's kind of like an extra security layer. So I could use this if I said I wanted to be the first in the meeting and I don't want to uh, enable anyone else to join before I'm actually in the meeting. So even people within my organization need to apply to be admitted to the call. I can click here on view all settings and then I have uh, an expanded view of it. And I can also make someone else a co-host. I can make up to 25 people co-host, um, but they have to be in the call in order for me to do so. Because the way I make this work is say I add a person as co-host and obviously they need to be in the call first. Now a co-host, uh, let me go and get Adam's account over here. So a co-host will now see this co-host controls appear and Adam could go ahead and disable the host management if he wanted to, but he cannot enable it anymore because now he even is no longer a co-host. He kind of like kicked himself out of being a co-host. And the only person who can enable this again is the original host themselves. Note that only the main host will receive meeting information like attendance, which 
by the way, is currently only available on enterprise um, pricing plans or polling questions and so on and so forth. But obviously, as the main host, you can then go ahead and share this with your co-hosts. When it comes to recurring meetings or just uh, meeting codes that are reused, it will keep your host management settings. Um, but obviously, if you add co-hosts, if you um, um, appoint co-host. This is something you will have to do in every meeting again. Now, the host management also gives us the option of ending a call for everyone or just leaving the call. Um, so if I say end the call for everyone, now everyone will have left the call. Bonus tip, the Google Meet desktop app. When you're in Google Meet in your browser, have a look at this tiny little icon. You can hardly see it, but if you click on it, it says, hey, you want to install the Google Meet app on your computer? I would advise you to do so. Why? Because what it does is, let me just go ahead and drag this over here. It installs a Google Meet app on your computer. So this means that Google Meet no longer has to be open in your browser in a separate tab, but instead it's a separate app running on your computer. This is, to be precise, a, progr a progressive web app. Uh, no matter what it's called, it's a super cool feature. It helps you to have one tab less or one browser window less open. Let me know which of these features do you enjoy using the most? And by the way, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our Google Workspace video tutorials.